What is going on all you goons and producers? It's your boy, Nico Anthony. As always, Damien's an alien. Yes, sir. I don't know if we filmed in a sec, but you know, Damien went on a, a bender in Vegas. I mean, yeah. I mean, I play a lot of Call of Duty. Yeah, a little FL something. A little, little, little FL. I mean, whoa, whoa, I can't whoa, say that. Whoa, 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 you can't say. Lo- lawyer, you need yeah, lawyer. Lawyer, lawyer. My bad, my bad. <laughs> don't shoot me. Anyways, we got a good show for you today. Man, this artist has been recommended by like a lot of people, yeah. at least two. And that's a lot. <laughs> uh, that's a lot considering this show. But today we got a local rapper in. She drops bangers only. Oh, true, yeah. Welcome in, Rakeem Alnor. Thank you for having me. This is where Thank the, the applause me. would play if we had a live audience, yeah. But <laughs> restrictions, you know, so that's just yeah, how it is. Yeah, I happens. feel it, I feel it. But yeah. either way, we, we, I actually met you at Juneteenth. I was, yeah. uh, I was a cool event all around, great music, but you killed it. You got energy up there. <laughs> that's all I can say. And then last night was a good time, the yeah. Scuddy Block Party. The Scuddy Block Party was dope. I fucking had a lot of fun, dude. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> You, you definitely also had the crowd going there oh, yeah. too, so yeah. Hey, it was a good time. Yeah, you it kill it. Time. We're happy to have you on. This city loves you. Yeah, like, dude. Like I'm, a lot I'm of the happy the city shows me love, man. A lot city of the rappers we've had on, are like we gotta get Rakim yeah. on. So hell yeah. So you're you're around for Art Walk. Let's do Shout it. out to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, you're also fresh off a release. Yes, static. I just dropped ecstatic. Uh, just the video. Uh, I'm gonna put the single on streaming platforms in like two weeks. Um, yeah, produced by Darko. It's the homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome music video. Thank you, thank yeah. you. In, yeah. in homie, Vegas. Yeah. yeah, my homie Francis uh, flew out, or actually drove out. He went on a long road trip all the way to Vegas, and uh, he told me and Jafro, uh, Jafro Dramas, to meet him out there, and uh, we just banged out two music videos over there. Fun time. Some fun time. Yeah. Vegas is some good yeah. scenery. Yeah, Ve- yeah, yeah, Vegas is always fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the Raiders, the new Raiders Stadium. New uh, Raiders Stadium. You got that in style? Like, you got some set pieces in yeah, there. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll definitely recommend you all check that out. And speaking of recommendations, song of the week, weekly song recommendations. We got a general and a local pick. Of course, Damien. What you got for us? All right. So I originally had a song of the week planned out. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. But driving on the way over here, I put all my music on shuffle. One song popped up that I was like, I got to recommend this. And you're going to appreciate this. Check out Andromeda by the Gorillaz. Let's go. Let's go. That song has put me in such a good mood every single time I listen to it. Every time I go out to a party or something in college, I would just put that on before I go. Good time. It's a good time. Go ahead. Go check that out. And as far as local picks, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to "Don't Slip" by Mark by Mike Batty. That's a that's a absolute banger of a hip hop song. You guys go ahead and go check that out if you like hip hop. I mean, pure hip hop. I mean, you can't get better than that. Uh, that's a move right there. You say Andromeda though. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's that's that a good classic, one. That's yeah. that's gonna be a good addition to the playlist, which is on Spotify. Producers underscore pit if you want to see what we've recommended since episode one and then what we've recommended locally. I don't know when we started that, but there's still a lot of good music on there. Anyways, we're going to kick it to our guest, Rakeem. You got any recommendations? Uh, So I I guess my general would probably be uh, Yale by Ken Carson. Super dope track. Uh, I just appreciate the the production and the bass, uh, especially as a producer, you know, love Mm -hmm. to hear some production. Uh, especially with different different styles, and uh, my local will probably have to be "What You Gonna Do" by Z the Author and Kali yeah. Soul <laughs> of the Real. Yeah. Amazing project. Damn, brother, we we've been we've been bumping the Real. Yeah, like ever since it came out, it's right. yeah, it, it's some like it's probably one yeah, of the best Mike, projects. Yeah, they Mike put, Batty had that verse on there. Yeah, Mike Batty me impressed out. me, man. Yeah, Blew me away with that verse. I mean, I knew he was Fantastic, he yeah. was amazing as an artist, but I didn't know he was versatile like yeah, that. Exactly. So I, I yeah. didn't know he could just come at you know rappers next too. Yeah. I was like, oh man, yeah. hey, yeah. hold up, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah. yeah, big amazing shout out to real, bro. Yeah, exactly. Kali Sozi, the author, is still probably made me laugh the hardest on our interview. Oh, yeah, they make me <laughs> laugh yeah, all the time. <laughs> man. Gonna... Fucking hilarious. Yeah, they're funny, dude. Anyways, let's move it on. What are my recommendations this week? 
Let's get something different on a little punk rock ska. Same in the end, Sublime. Ooh, okay. Off of that 1996 album, which I think was just titled Sublime. Mm -hmm. Everyone's too busy worrying about Santeria on that album. It's overplayed. <laughs> Go listen to Same in the End. That's a banger. I actually first heard that on the Tony Hawk soundtrack, so like the new game, uh, that remastered. Yeah. So oh, I was like, damn, this goes hard. I've been listening to a lot. And locally, now I know we just had them on, but I haven't been able to shake it from my head. No Inches in Between by Scorpio season, man. Mm. Some of the catchiest stuff. I mean, you, you guys have been stuck on my head before. <laughs> but I have not been able to shake No Inches in Between. I keep oh, coming yeah. back to that this week. Like, ever since y'all played it live at our event and then in the studio, I was just, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of taking over my life. It's, yeah. it's catchy, it's banging, that guitar solo, the slaps, like, what more can you want? So that'll be on the playlist for sure. So that's about it for Song of the Week. Um, nothing crazy in the, in the way of news yet, you know. I mean... There could be something. Kanye, if Kanye, Kanye. would have dropped, we would have had news. That's Thank true. you, Kanye, but you didn't. What the hell, so, Kanye? I know, bet betrayed us all, man. I was going to say. So, outside of that, I guess we're going to take a break. So, we'll be right back. Little bitch, know that. Pull up in the throwback. Hoes want to throw that. Looking where the dough at. Five for the collab. This my city. You can never, ever go back. Bitch, you crazy. Gotta get with the program. Get that Eddie. I ain't really trying to hold Yo, this is Rakim Alnor. And you watching a producer's pit, baby. In the kitchen, when I whip, you know this shit gon' get explicit. Put you on the side, gotta play your own position. Cover on autopilot, ain't no key in the ignition. And you're back with the producer's pit. Welcome back. We got Rakeem Alinor, local hip hop artist, local legend, I guess, according, <laughs> according to some. Yeah. With, with how people been telling us, get this man on. So we got to give the people what they want. And here we are. So we got some questions for you of varying degrees of, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Our questions is yeah, whatever. whatever. They, they, they just happen, you know. Yeah. We just we, we find stuff. We ask around. We, we pay gas station attendants. They, sometimes they, they give us good info. Sometimes they don't, you yeah. know. I mean, we know what gas station you like, yeah, actually. You do? Speedway, yeah. right? No. Oh, no. <laughs> it, it used to be Giant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, R.I.P., bro. Oh, R.I.P. Giant. Yeah. Oh. R.I.P. Giant. Anyways, oh. let's start from kind of the beginning with you. You know, what got you into music and then what specifically got you into hip-hop and rap? Um, so when I was a uh, youngin', uh, I was born in Jersey. I had moved out here when I was like 12 or something. Um, but I, you know, consider Albuquerque home for sure. But when I was living in Jersey, I just remember the little time I would spend with my dad, he would be with my uncles and they'd be rapping, like rapping on like a tape recorder and shit to just beats playing in the back. And so I guess that was my first exposure to it. And my mom, she also was super hip hop head. So she put me on Wu-Tang, you know, Tribe Called Quest, uh, Nas. I was named after Nas and Rakim. So you know, it just, uh, I couldn't, you know, yeah. I couldn't just go work at McDonald's. <laughs> I got, got two legends names, yeah. you know, I got to live up to it. So, yeah. so I guess, you know, that got me into it. And then just moving out here, um, when I was younger, I didn't really see any like rappers coming up out here really, you know, I, I knew of a few, but I didn't really see any, any that were big from here. So I had always had that dream of like, oh, I want to be the guy that opens the door for everybody, you know? So, um. But, you know, also just the love for music got me super into it. Love just of the sounds. All right. And um, any big inspirations in terms of, you know, your music? Uh, big inspirations probably be like Young Thug, Kanye, um, J. Cole, Kendrick, um, Travis Scott. Just, yeah, all of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anything, honestly, anything that I hear that I think, you know, sounds good, that kind of makes me think of music in a different perspective is an inspiration to me. So even rock and shit, you know, uh, sometimes country. I don't, country's like my least favorite genre, but sometimes I hear something in country, I'm like, yo, that riff was, <laughs> yeah. riff was nice. <laughs> uh, so on that, is there anything outside of hip hop that really heavily inspires you and your music? Uh, definitely like punk rock music, uh, metal, 
I was super into metal as like a little kid. I had like my metal phase in, in middle school and I'd like paint my nails black, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like wear Hot Topic clothes and shit. Yeah. And then, I don't know, I kind of got out of it and I was like, you know what? That was cool, I'm gonna get back into it. Like, <laughs> that was really me. <laughs> so yeah, that's like the big thing. I guess the way they dress in like metal and shit. And then just like how hardcore they go at the shows, you know? Um, and how the fans just fucking, you know, they, they're sweating and it's just too, super personal, you know? I love yeah. that. I've been to hip hop shows or, you know, even like seeing DJs just have people like standing there at festivals and stuff. So I just love how, I don't know why, but you know that, that when people come on the stage with that rock mentality, it's like everybody just wants to turn the fuck up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. I mean, you, you got people turning the fuck oh, up, yeah, so. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I got it from them. Sure. I got yeah, it exactly. from them. <laughs> yeah, just, just don't break shit. You know, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes shit be getting broken. Last yeah. night, some shit got broken. Oh, really? Oh, yes. no. Oh, no. Yeah, some oh, shit got yeah. broken, but it's all good. Everybody's yeah. alive. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say the, the music equipment was on uh, was on warranty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it was hope. not on warranty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wish I would have known, you know? Yeah. It, just know if you come to a Rakim show and you doing sound or something, have insurance because shit is getting <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> shit will get fucked up. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> you heard it here first. Your shirt is getting ripped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, then you can. That's a that's a good ploy to get people buy your merch. Like, oh shit, my, my shirt's ripped. Yeah. You're like, yeah. hey, I got yeah. this. We should shirt just have ready. someone yeah. walk around ripping people's shirts, so then they have no choice but to buy the merch. <laughs> exactly. Like, what am I gonna do now? Yeah, that's a good plan. That's a, that's <laughs> yeah, that's, it's a ploy. That is. There we money, go. Money making. It's, yeah. I don't think I don't think that's illegal. I, I mean, if all. nobody knows, then hey, you didn't hear here. You didn't hear yeah, that. you didn't hear that. Allegedly, in yeah, Minecraft, allegedly, we yeah, do like, all that in Minecraft. My, Minecraft. We got him. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this, is where the, this is where the where Tim Kelly's team rolls in. Yeah, yeah you, they walk in the door right now. Yeah. yeah. It's all good, man. I need you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> in my, in my line. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, as we mentioned at the start of the show, you just dropped a new single, "Ecstatic." Tell us a bit about what in, went into that. You know. The song and the music video, because, you know. Um, so the, the funny process. thing about the song is I was recording in my house uh, over in California, um, and my roommates were all asleep. Everybody was asleep. And so for some reason, I felt like I had to be kind of quiet when I was recording. Like, it, it was, I had just kind of moved there, so I didn't know how the environment was. So I was whispering on it, like, on the track, and I was like, damn, this kind of goes hard, you know, because <laughs> like, the beat's yeah. hard. But I was whispering, and I was like, yo, it kind of opened my eyes to like expanding my voice more, you know, like other than just singing, you know, whispering, doing just other things, deep voices, whatever, you know, just expanding my voice. And I kind of got that from Kendrick, too, because he just always, you know, every song he uses his voice in different ways, but, you know, it's Kendrick, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, Darko made the beat, the homie Francis made the video. Um, that whole experience with the video was super fun. Uh, we actually got a cam uh, cameo from my boy Renato. He's one of the uh, top top three uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighters in the world. But you wouldn't know that because he's just skating in the back of the video. Yeah. But yeah, dude is super crazy, super great fighter, uh, super good energy too, just the talks. And you know, the talks that we had, it was a great experience, you know? And I think that's the best thing about when I drop a song. You know, I don't just try to drop a lot of music. I try to drop shit that like, you know, has like a significance to me. Like it has like a story behind it and shit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that one's special to me for sure. <laughs> Ecstatic. <laughs> no, I to move, especially when the story's behind it. Cause oh yeah, mm -hmm. you can come on a show like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell us all sure. about it. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. that's a big thing too. Is you know you can put out music and people kind of just judge it at face value with what they hear, but if they kind of know the story behind it, you know, they kind of can also understand it better and see where you're coming from and you know how you make a song, so, yeah. you know, it's always beneficial and all that stuff. Yeah, for sure, and I, I love, like, I, I'm, I'm a talker, so I love expanding, yeah. <laughs> I love expanding on, you know, if people got a question, I'm like, yeah, sure, I would love to tell you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I was waiting for you to ask. <laughs> I'm about to say, are, are you in the crypto? Because if that's the case, we're going to be here for an hour. Oh, no, no, I need to get into it, though. Oh, no. I, mean, I need to get into it. Everybody's telling me, especially in L.A., it's like, oh. that's the big talk out there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, if you do, hit us up. We're trying to do a crypto episode. Yeah, we are. With yeah. uh, all right, I'm gonna go do my there's research. There's a couple. There's a couple, a couple artists, artists yeah. around here that are. Into oh, I know. Stuff. I know. Kali loves crypto. <laughs> <laughs> Kali calls me every morning, bro. My shit just dropped. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he's just trying to make a fuck ton of money so he can get that meat mountain from Arby's, you know? Yeah, he needs that meat yeah. mountain from Arby's <laughs> for right. sure. Give him the meat mountain challenge, Kali. I'm calling you out. <laughs> I got $100 on it if you could finish the whole meat mountain. We're, we're yeah. trying to do a world record, world record run here. Run, yeah. He thinks he can finish the meat mountain world record time. We're going to get that stuff in Guinness, everything, so. We're going to fill him up. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I have some OnlyFans content. Oh, yeah. that, 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 like, oh, we shit. might have to, yeah, it might have to be a producer's pit episode on OnlyFans. Only yeah, like, yeah, Kylie yeah, yeah. in the Meat Mountain. Yeah, that's true. That's a, that's, I think that's too much meat for YouTube. So you know. Yeah, <laughs> true. Well, now what about the uh, rap scene, you know, out here? I mean, you've been active, you got a lot of work with a lot of cool people out here for sure but you know is there anything that you've you know seen that's unique about the rap scene out here or perhaps different from other places you've been um i would say probably the love that everyone's showing each other right now uh because just when i was younger uh it was really hard especially i would say for black artists and like i would say even native artists because i had a lot of homies that were native that weren't really getting looks like that you know like, no one's trying to get them on shows and stuff. So we had to do our own shows, you know? Like, the Scuddy Block Party is, like, just really... I've been doing this shit since I was, like, 16, you know? Throwing shows at 508, throwing shows at, uh, you know, uh, like, El Rey and shit. Or not El Rey, but, like, um, Sunshine. Just shit like that. Um, opening up for artists, like, when you could, you know? So, like, now that everybody's, you know, trying to get each other on shows and, and showing each other love and, like, putting each other on, it's it's really dope to see because... Like in LA, I don't, I don't really see that. It's like it's a competition, you know. It's, mm. it's like every man for himself out there. So to see everybody out here in Albuquerque showing each other love, it's like, I wish that was everywhere I went, you know. So that's one unique ass thing I, I definitely think is dope. Yeah, no, definitely. Music's such a cutthroat industry. Yeah. It's just tough yeah, to definitely, especially when money's in involved. Oh yeah, my God. yeah. People yeah. run each other over. It's yeah, yeah, terrible, happens. dude. It's, it's scary. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so, as we've mentioned. Quite a bit, you know. Got great energy. You mm -hmm. know how to control the crowd. Scuddy block party definitely got rowdy. Oh, yeah. So, so uh -huh. Especially now that we know that shit got broken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but got there, too rowdy. <laughs> are there any other gigs that had that much energy and that were very memorable to you? Um, back in, like, 2018 when we were doing Meow Wolf, like, we would almost opened up for like every like hip hop act that would come to Meow Wolf and those got really crazy. Those got really crazy and that's what kind of made me open my eyes to like damn like okay I could we could do this shit. We could pack out these shows. We're packing out Meow Wolf. Everybody's driving from Albuquerque to Santa Fe to see us you know so we could definitely pack out Albuquerque you know mm -hmm. so that shit opened my eyes for sure. Um, I would say my favorite show of all of those was Sango though. Um, we performed for Sango. Sango watched our set. He thought we were dope. Uh, we met Kaylin Ellis through that show and just created a lot of dope relationships and connections with people. So it was amazing. <laughs> it's not the shows where you break shit that I remember, but it's the one where you meet people. Yeah, it's the one where you meet people. Yeah, because I'd be feeling bad, you know? It's like if it wasn't my, like me throwing the show, I wouldn't really care if sh people's shit is getting broken, but I'm all, damn, like. You know, oh, I'm so sorry I put you in this position. Yeah. But hey, at least it was lit. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll come back again. Yeah. But, you know, maybe bring your second best music equipment. Yeah. yeah sure. For these shows. <laughs> maybe we need like a, a like a security guard on stage. Like, hold on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like pushing everybody back. Yeah. yeah. I about to say, I don't think have like they we might need barricades. Yeah, we might need to just put barricades. Yeah. Sandbags. Yeah, yeah, but knowing me, I'm gonna jump over the barricades. <laughs> yeah. then, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get like a like a glass box. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> like Kanye. Yeah, yeah we get a glass it, box. Yeah. We should. Yeah, we should just do the pit next time, and I'll just perform in the middle of the pit, and everybody yeah, just sits just around. Everybody goes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there you go. That would be that would be pretty dope. Man. I'd be down. There needs to be more shows in the pit. That's a good venue. Yeah. We should do a show in the pit. That would be crazy. Yeah, that would be crazy. Be crazy. Hey, UNM, hit us up. We already paid too UNM. much tuition, so exactly. come on. hit the line. At least a phone call, Garnet. Come on. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, 
So let's talk about a bit about Scuddy. That's that was a block party. That's your name, your album's name, your record label's name. So is that person? Is that a saying so it's, something? It's really just I I would say just a lifestyle. You know, like. Me and my homies, <clears throat> when we were running through Albuquerque, we didn't have cars and shit. We were just running up and down Central, like getting in trouble, fighting people on the, the fucking Central bus, like, you know, just doing scuddy shit. And that's like really what it means, is just being grimy, you know, just being like, you know, not like grimy where you're ruining people's lives, but just, you know, we were causing trouble, <laughs> you know, causing a lot of trouble. So it, I, I guess like scuddy, you know, it just embodies what we do, you know? Kind of causing trouble. Controlled chaos. There you go. <laughs> Controlled chaos. Gotcha. That, we have a term for that, too. We call that hood rat shit. Yeah, so, yeah. you know. We be on that hood rat, rat shit. shit. Yeah, yeah exactly. scuddy hood rat shit. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Hey, are, yeah. hey. <laughs> There it is. It's the same. Yeah. It, it all means the same thing. Yeah, it all, all means the same thing. The, <laughs> you know, it's in the thesaurus when you look up hood rat shit. Yeah. Scuddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then our, you know, our female, uh, or our women fans, as I should say, are, uh, are our scuddies, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the scuddies. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. And we moved quite a bit through this. We got a, definitely a, a lot of good stuff here. But my last question for you is, has Dion's come back for that picture that you and your friend may have borrowed? Now, don't got to say anything if your lawyer ain't present, but. <laughs> I'm not going to say much, but come get it back in blood, Dion's. In blood. <laughs> <laughs> come get it back in blood. <laughs> Damn, you about getting a, in a gunfight with Dion. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to war with them. I got, got some people ready. Yeah. <laughs> My Twitter followers are ready. Yeah. <laughs> it's like gangbanging, bro. It's the, the scuddies against Dion's, yeah, bro. Yeah. That's, the, that's the real shit. Yeah, that's the real that's, shit. That's, yeah. the, that's why they call it the war zone, because that's the war right there. <laughs> yeah, <know>? for real. <laughs> yeah. I'll be ready for it. I about to say, you... you you might have already shipped it to L.A., so that might be long gone. Yeah. So. Yeah, I might have. Shit. We're, 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 we're starting be beef with Dion's yeah, now. Say, yeah. Shit, this, this show's getting out of control. Yeah. But, hey, <laughs> I, I guess that's what happened when we got you on the show. At least nothing's broken, but. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, don't yeah, let him get up. Don't let him get yeah, up. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> they got me handcuffed Mark, to this chair. Mark, you just don't see it. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Call security. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. We, we, that would have been a... I, that should be a concept there. We'll handcuff you for a show and see what happens. See if you break it. Break, break a pipe yeah, off the wall. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> just smoke off, coming yeah. out of it. <laughs> Steam coming out of the <laughs> pipe. <laughs> <laughs> they can't control it. <laughs> It's like yeah. old dude rapper ninja warrior, but you're in a straight jacket. You know? oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> so some that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. That would be crazy. I'll be down. Yeah, I'm with it. Yeah. So you can't break nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, if there's I would a break will, something a with my head. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. There's a will. There's a way. Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> so, but hey, you know, there's always stories when shit gets broken. So just not in the studio, please. Yeah. yeah but, um, Tim Keller would be yeah, that's a, that's a nice Keller. studio to break some shit in. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> shit, bro. We, you you got to keep that on the down low because I said Tim Keller's had us on the oh, radar yeah, ever, ever since, right, you know? Right. Yo, Tim Keller, get me on the next freaking commercial, man. I want to be on an Albuquerque commercial, man. I'm so Albuquerque. War zone, east side, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're about representation, get this man that's in. True. I'm so Albuquerque. I be repping. I repped it from New York to L.A. every day, baby. <laughs> I heard that. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can get in the word on. If we if we ever get Keller on the show, we'll we'll make sure we get you two yeah, in the same yeah. room. Yeah, I'm gonna be we'll like, do like a shark Keller yeah, set, sure. man. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, you wanna be on the track or? <laughs> yeah, get him on a track, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo. That'll be different. There you go. That'll be different. I'm Have him throwing hundreds <laughs> <laughs> on the video. Yeah, that's cr that'll be crazy. Throwing so, Arby sandwiches. Oh damn, yeah, true. We'll have Jay Scribe and Z throwing RV sandwiches. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Kali <laughs> eating the meat now in the video. Yo, it's a great concept. We got like five yeah, scenes right there. There you go. True. Exactly. <laughs> Just film a whole music video on Arby's. There you go. Just damn, that's smart. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do it. God damn it. <laughs> we can't shake the Arby show. We were good for one week. It's all right. It's and okay. we're back. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> hey, it gets wild up in here. But we got some more fun questions coming up. 
for our guests. But first, let's take a quick break before something gets broken, yeah? They never gave a shit. Prior to a play, I would sit on the bench. Put us on the door because we laid on the frame. In place like whip, need no tent. Money in my face, I'ma make that flip. It's a true aspect that a nigga needs. This is Rakim Al Noor, and you're watching Albuquerque Public Access. Swim with the sharks, went to school with piranha. If a nigga talking phase, then homie, we can run him in your check on the side, trying to show me some. I ain't the only one. Trying to ball out, trying to hit these stunts. Niggas all mad, they didn't get And you are back with the producer's pit. We are here with Rakeem Alnor, local hip hop artist. Everyone loves him. They said, get this man on. We did. It's a little rambunctious up in here, but hey, we get we gotta have some fun. Gotta have fun. Gotta have fun. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's all about having fun. True. But anyways, we got some music production questions and more from our resident producer, Damien's an alien. Thank so you. what you got? Uh, so first things first. What do you think the cadence of an artist on a song carries over to the audience? Like, do you think that allows some more insight to an artist? Do you think that is a big, important thing that artists should worry about? About their cadence? Yeah. Um, I think for sure. I think that, you know, if you kind of come the same on every song, it get you know, it gets repetitive. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're just coming up with different cadences and, and you come up with one that people never heard before, it's super impressive, you know? It's like, wow, there's so much music in the world and like you are able to just still find, you know, that pocket. You are still mm -hmm. able to find that pocket. And also it, it says a lot about the artist too, to be able to get on the beat and, and kind of do it, do it justice, you know? Because I feel like a majority of music, you know, the first thing you really hear is the instrumental. Like mm -hmm. that's really what you're hearing. You're not really, paying attention much to the lyrics because it takes a couple times to hear the lyrics to be able to be like, okay, this is exactly what it is. You know, you don't get the lyrics and the cadence right away, but you know, if the cadence is rocking with the beat, then you know, you're like, okay, mm -hmm. like I'm vibing with this yeah. for sure. I'm vibing with it. So yeah, it's super important, I would say. And what difficulties so far in your journey so far that have you encountered and how have you overcome those difficulties? Um, the difficulties I would say is just um, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm sure you go through it also as a producer and shit, uh, just that like feeling like, like I'm not making anything like new, like I'm doing the same shit or like you make like five beats in one day and they're just garbage and you're like, bro, like, you know, I make beats every day and, and there'll be a week straight where it's just ass. Like my beats are straight ass and I'm like pissed off that whole week, but you know, then you get through that, like you break through that and you make that beat and you're like, oh shit, like. I don't need to quit, you know, I'm, I'm good. You know, I just had to push through it. So I think like that's a big challenge, but also I love it. I love that challenge, you know, I love challenges, you know, mm -hmm. so that for sure. Yeah. Do you have any go to uh, sample packs or, uh, you know, like effects? Um, I would say my go to sample packs for drums um, would be like the the Illmind Blap Kits. Yeah. I love the Illmind Blap Kits. Um, the Kaylin Ellis uh, drum kits too. He makes some crazy drum packs, yeah. insane ones. <clears throat> um, and then on the low, you know the old school uh, Sunny Digital, yeah, Sunny yeah. Digital 808 <laughs> kit. <laughs> yeah. Thing that birth trap, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 808s all heartbreak. I, I was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 808s all, all heartbreak. heartbreak. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> And uh, what part of the process do you think is the most difficult part when you're producing? Um, producing, I guess the most difficult for me is just to kind of create a vibe, like figure out what kind of vibe I want to make, you know? Because sometimes like I'll hear a song and I'll be like, damn, I want to make a, like a beat just like this. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you never can, it's, it never happens. Mm -hmm. But like when you hear it and you're like, all right, I'm a, you know, I, I like the way that these hi-hats sound. I love this rattle. I like how they, they change the velocity on the hi-hats. Like, then I try to use shit like that instead of trying to recreate the song. Um, shit, what was the question again? I'm so sorry. Um, it, it was, what's the most difficult part of Oh yeah, production? so the difficult part, yeah. would, I guess, would be like trying to remake something yeah. that you think is super dope. Mm -hmm. Um, because really all you could do is just take bits and pieces from it, you know, like to use. But yeah, that's, I would say that's the most difficult thing. When I hear a song, I'm like, fuck, I want to make something just like this. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you like, you try and try and you can't like, and that's the, I think that's the magic of music too, is that like, it can be replicated. 
-hmm. Like you could do covers of songs, you could do it, but it's not, it, you know, it's not like how the original is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so we're gonna do a new segment here. This is the first time we're ever doing it. It's gonna be called This or That, That or This. Okay. So it's kind of like a would you rather type thing. You know, okay. I'm gonna give you two things. You're gonna have to see which one you prefer. Okay. Um, it's written and, down here for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, so it's written down. So, so let's, let's go ahead and, and, and go through these. So would you rather have weak lyrics and a good instrumental or good lyrics and a bad instrumental? Uh, good instrumental, <laughs> weak lyrics. <laughs> okay, okay. And, and then, is there any reason behind that? Or? Uh, just because, I mean, like Playboy Cardi, for example, that's one of my favorite artists, but his like lyrics are just not like, you know, they're not like anything that you would be like, man, this is fucking lyrical, dude. Like, you know, but the beats, like the beats and just the way he goes on the beats, like yeah, we talked about like cadence, cadence, it just, yeah. you know, it solidifies what he's doing. So... Yeah, I, I love, you know, and also the beat. It's like, if you could bear the beat, then fuck it, you can bear the lyrics. <laughs> Unless the lyrics are really, really bad, then, like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's some Ice J.J. Fish stuff. Right? Yeah, like some Ice J.J. Fish. <laughs> yeah. Man, yo. Yeah, you killed that. One time, when, like, when I first started rapping, this dude on Facebook, he had, like, been like, yo, man, you kind of sound like a, a mix between Ice J.J. Fish and 50 Tyson. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, that sounds great. And then I went and listened to him and I was like, yo, fuck this dude, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Damn, damn. I, yeah, I don't know if that's an insult or comment. That was definitely an insult. That's <laughs> yeah, definitely, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's crazy. All right, so my next question is, um, would you rather have collaboration or competition? Honestly, I kind of like competition more. Okay. Um, I like, I mean, when I collaborate, I feel like you need to bring something to the song that someone's not bringing, you know? And um, I feel like it kind of almost is like a competition. Like for me, like whenever I have some, like Kali get on a song, like I expect Kali to go his hardest, you know? Mm -hmm. Like if Z gets me on a song, I gotta go my hardest. You know, there was one time I did a song with Z and I didn't go that hard and I'm happy it did not come out because, you know, it's, it's kind of the competitive nature. It's like, if I didn't do that good, I don't want people to see that, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't want people to see me taking that L. Like, I want people to see me like, damn, Z went off, but yo, Rakim, like, you know? Or like, yeah. you know, or like people are like, like, man, yo, Rakim, you did good, but Kali, dude, like, dude, you should have stepped it up on the track. Like, you should have, because Kali killed you. Like, I love that, comp that competition, you know? Yeah. So, and I also love, like, that Z and Kali dropped the reel, because then that sets the bar. Now oh, yeah. I'm like, okay, now I got to do something different, but, like, just as hard, mm -hmm. you know? So it's dope. I love it. Like it's friendly competition oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Now, would you rather have the studio version of a song or a live version of a song, or would you rather listen to it? I should say. Ooh. I feel like it depends if there's live instruments in the song. <clears throat> if there's cool. live instruments in the song, oh, definitely would mm -hmm. love to hear the live version because you know people start you they get into that that vibe and then you know the guitarist is just you know he's in in sync with everybody and then they're like yo go off and he yeah. <laughs> starts hitting his solo yeah. you know and you just hear aspects of the song that that they hadn't thought of before when they had did the studio cut you know but if it's like a rap song i definitely usually like to hear the studio version more yeah <laughs> yeah i agree for sure mm -hmm. now now this is an important one okay Ass or titty? Oh shit, we're getting political again. Ass, <laughs> ass all day, ass all day. <laughs> okay, okay, I feel, I feel. I don't know why, it's just ass. <laughs> That's a good quote right there. <laughs> all right, so the next question is, would you rather have a crowd that's vibey or ragey? I mean, we, we already kind of know this answer. Yeah. No. <laughs> I would true. rather have a, a crowd that's raging. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, it's, it's kind of awkward when you're in a room of like 300 people and no one's like, everyone's just staring at you. They're like, oh, wow. You yeah. know, like versus like, you know, like the crowd is just vibing with you. You know, they're like really like feeling it. They're raging with you. You're like, they're feeling the same energy you're bringing to them. Like, I love that. I love that because that's dope. You know, it would look kind of crazy if I'm bouncing around on the stage and everyone's just standing there like. Oh, that look bad. It's, yeah. like, <laughs> it's like golf club. Yeah, yeah they're all like, yeah, golf club claps. Yeah. Oh, man. Exquisite. Yeah. <laughs> Exquisite composition. Yeah, I'm happy they have not done me like that. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> I definitely feel... All right, so my last question is pretty important, too. McDonald's or Arby's? <laughs> McDonald's all day? That's not okay, even a okay. question. That's true. <laughs> McDonald's. Yeah. And I don't even like yeah. McDonald's. I'm not, not about, about to meet Mountain, Mountain yeah. but my boy Kali. <laughs> my boy Kali, I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. Uh, <laughs> All right, on the topic of competition, <laughs> what do you think that brings to the studio setting? Do you think it creates more a toxic environment, or do you think it could create something better? Do you think it pushes everybody? Because I think you, you insinuated that it does help people push them to the next level. But do you think that could get toxic in some senses? It definitely can get toxic. I feel like music's all about chemistry, for sure, right? So. Mm -hmm. Even though it's like a it's like friendly competition or any type of competition, you want to make sure that there's chemistry, like the ke positive chemistry at least, mm -hmm. because you know I've been in hella studio sessions like with like bigger artists and shit, and you know they've allowed like like people like me, you know, a little bit smaller artists to like be in the session and even like work on shit, help write, and I've seen people try to like kind of like compete to get in, like to get into the you know, into the mix, like, oh, I gotta be in the song, so I'm gonna, like, try to, like, do, you know, do some shit that's not them. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, try to just impress the person or be in the person's face a lot. Like, that could get, like, you know, it, could, it becomes a hindrance because, it's like, you're not trying to compete with the, like, you're not trying to compete musically. You're trying to compete with, like, you know, just whatever energy you're bringing, you know? It's like, oh, I want you to fuck with me as a person so then you could help me get on instead instead of like being like, yo, I just want to make a dope song with this person. And if they fuck with me, they fuck with me. If not, they don't. Like, I, it, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Like, big artists, after being around them, it doesn't really matter to me that much anymore. You know, like, when I was in Albuquerque, I was like, man, I want, like, a bigger artist. Like, you know, I want to open up for bigger artists and do this and that. And then after doing it, it doesn't really always put you in a better position. You know, sometimes it's just like you did a show. Like, and so now I'm just seeing that, like that competition for people's attention. And I'm like, uh, you know, that's, that's the toxicness in the studio mm -hmm. is just when you're taking away from the music mm -hmm. for sure. But yeah, then it could be, you know, super positive where it's like, yo man, like, like you hear a homie kind of spitting a freestyle and you're like, oh shit, like, yeah. oh, I gotta go hard, you know? And like, that's when it's, you know, dope or like, I was in the studio with uh, Laven Kali and uh, Kaylin, and, and Laven was playing the piano, and Kaylin started playing the drums, and they, you know, we're just literally just building the song off that. Like, I love that type of, you know, it wasn't really competitive, but like, they were just almost, it seemed like they were like competing with each other in a way, like, where it's like, let's make this song by like, you know, competing like melodies and shit, competing mm -hmm. cadences. So it was pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy to see. Yeah. And do you have any tips to create a better and more collaborative environment? Um, I would just say be you. Like literally just be you. Like if you're if you're quiet, just like be quiet. You're cool. Mm -hmm. Like <clears throat> I'm I'm not really the type of person that walks in a room and tries to like be like, hey everybody. Like I don't really try to do that unless I like know people. Like if I know everybody, I'm gonna walk in there acting a fool. But like if I don't know people, then I just kind of sit back and I'll like make a beat or whatever. And every time, bro, like the people that are in everybody's face, they're like oh, like, you know, okay, you're in my face too much. And then they look at me or, like, somebody that's over there in the corner, like, making it be there, like, yo, what the fuck is that guy doing? Like, that guy, like, there's something going on over there. Yeah. Like, you know, and then, like, that's when they're like, yo, like, let me see what's up with you. And mm -hmm. then you get your moment. You know, I feel like everybody has a moment. Like, that's my favorite saying. It's like, mm -hmm. everybody has a moment. And you got to kind of just let everybody get their moment and shit. For yeah. sure. 100%. Now, on topic of collaboration, do you have anybody that you would like to collaborate within the city? Um, that you haven't collaborated with. I want to so. get a song with Z for sure. Mm -hmm. Me and Z, like, we've been near each other way too much for like five years now or some shit. Like, yeah. you know, doing shows and shit, and like, we still haven't gotten a song together. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to get a song with him for sure. Scribe. Um, yeah, I got to get a song with a few more people. I got one with Rylan Oz, but it's like a, it's a placement song, so. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really like a personal one, so I want to get like a personal one with him because mm. he he dope too. He a, mm. he spitter for sure. Oh, yeah. 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 And do you have any dream collaborations, whether that being globally? Uh, dream or? collabs, shit like Kanye, yeah. uh, <laughs> shit Kendrick, Schoolboy Q, yeah. Um, Quincy Jones, if he's still alive by the time, you know that's <laughs> one of my favorite uh, yeah. composers, Quincy Jones. Um, 
am, like Tay Beast, he's a producer mm. for TDE. Like, I guess I would rather do more collaborations with producers. Mm. Cause I, I really, I really like how that, that goes along. But yeah, yeah. I kind of like my music being me too though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I feel that 100%. Well, thank you. That's all I got today. Cool. All right, all right. Well, I think all that's left to do is try to go crazy on the music stage. Yeah. Just don't break anything, please. <laughs> I'm breaking everything. <laughs> well, first there's a couple more things we got to cover, but I was, uh, I was quite a bit, so let's take a break. I'm Rakim Alnor, and if you want to see more dope content, subscribe to the Producers Pit. And you are back with the Producers Pit. We just had some great conversation with Rakim Alnor, local hip hop artist, and Dion's picture stealer, maybe, <laughs> I don't know, allegedly. Allegedly. Alleged. Say, Alleged. Yeah, I was say. Innocent until proven guilty. Exactly. Yeah. That's what they say on the intro of cops, so, <laughs> you know, that's the law <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, before we let you loose on the music stage, where can we find all your music, or can we stream it, all that good so stuff? So, all my music is on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, yeah. uh, what else? Uh, it's on all of them. Yeah. Rakim Alnor, R A K I M A L N U R. And where can we find you on social media? Rakim Alnor, R A K I M A L N U R. Seeing if you know the words. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much almost every social media platform. That's out there. every social media platform. Roblox, I got. OnlyFans. Roblox. Yeah, so my about? Roblox. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My Club Penguin. Club Penguin. Club Penguin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got all, all the major ones. Yeah, I feel like out of all the guests, you would definitely have an OnlyFans. And yeah, just... I definitely do. But that's for that's another episode. That's another episode. That's another episode. Yeah. A meme out episode. That's a meme out episode. Yeah. Subscribe now. <laughs> 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 All right. And uh, anything upcoming you'd like to tell us about while you're here? Anything upcoming? Yeah. No. no. But Rockstar Ho should drop soon. Ooh. Look out for that. I performed that twice in Albuquerque and it yeah. went crazy both times. <laughs> I was experimenting with it and I'm like, oh shit. I gotta drop it. <laughs> yeah. So now you can go crazy on it in the comfort of your own home. Exactly. And go break your own shit, not yeah. the shit at my fucking show. <laughs> there you go. Get, get it all out at home with your own stuff. So, you know, yeah. any damages, we're not liable. Akeem's not liable, you know. That's all, that's all on you. <laughs> uh, so, before we plug our stuff, is there anybody you'd like to see on the show in future? My boy Jafro Damas, uh, my boy Malik Swift, Daniel Thomas, uh, M. Scott Loves Life. If y'all could get Caitlin Ellis when it, whenever he's out here, that would yeah. be a dope one. Oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a dream one. That would be a dope one. one. Um, I don't know. I've seen a lot of people on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know who else, but yeah. yeah. If I forgot you, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. And if, of course, you've heard your name. DM us on Instagram at producers underscore pit. And that's also where you can find highlights. That's where you know when the episodes go live, when events are going down, um, when the OnlyFans <laughs> sales say, are. Yeah. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> All that good stuff. Spotify, same handle. If you want to see Song of the Week playlist and Local Picks playlist, it is an experience that goes all over the place. So yeah. if you are... If the vibe that you want to hear in a playlist is yes, <laughs> then go check that stuff oh, yeah. out. <laughs> of course, YouTube Producers Pit, full episodes, the whole nine. Of course, Public Access, Comcast, we on there too. Yeah, Channel 27. Channel 27. Yeah. I, I, that's where it's at, courtesy of our homies at Studio 519, which is who lets us use this amazing space. So we're on their TV deal too. So, hey. It's a good time. You can you can watch this show a bunch of places. Anyways, 
that's about it for this part of the show. All I have to do now is see if any of our shit's going to get broken on the music <laughs> stage. So we're just playing Russian roulette on this one. So all I can say is have at it, and we'll have a great performance after this break. Let's go! Gotta live it the way that I gotta get it. The purse on the perfect for the way that I crashed the mission. We in your neighborhood trying to stake us out in kitchen. Had to stick with mom and daddy, left before a mistress. It was nothing but something I couldn't get up on the wish list. Fuck you and the man can't be playing on defensive. Come with that friction and you gon' really. Hey. Producers pay, we in the building. Scuddy, yeah, let's go. Love, yo. Trying to fucking make a million off a cent. Nigga trying to hustle just so he can pay the rent. Think about all the money that a nigga spent on these hoes, on these clothes, all that shit, man. I should have bought a rose, man. I should have let these niggas know that I'm that nigga not to be fucked with. Fucking with my niggas, they gon' have to lift you up, bitch. Straight up to the sky. Nigga, I be in this bitch getting so high with my motherfucking guys. Niggas want the fame, but this shit come with a price. Look at all the shit that we had to go sacrifice. I had to get you to change just to change before your eyes. I pray for your success and you just pray for my demise. So my nigga, is we really brethren? Niggas want me in hell, but I just want to see my niggas up in heaven. A thug's mansion, whatever you want to call it. My nigga, I give you the last dollar up out my wallet. The food up off my plate. It's funny that most niggas can't relate. I'm trying to take my dogs to home base. I'm running from nightmares, so my dreams I'm a chase. I gotta stay focused, can't worry about the hate. Our mind on the beat, it's gonna smack them in the face. Niggas talk down on the city to get chased down the street. Then they get their ass beat. Nigga, this is not Miami. But them niggas fucking with the heat And I am not Dwayne Wade A nigga just ballin', I'm tryna get myself paid Cause niggas straight sitting idle And that's my biggest rival Nigga, I just came from the streets A nigga born straight up off survival The hustle Nigga, I don't want that real shit The hustle Scuddy, 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 scuddy Niggas say they want that real shit Nigga, it's the hustle, nigga Y'all niggas need the hustle Records, yeah, 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 yeah. Bitch, you know I'm with it, low, ho, I get it cracking. I pull up in this bitch, don't know nobody, ho, what's happening? My niggas selling work, you at a time, you know they taxing. I like my bitches, bad as fucking, you know that they ratchet. I'm getting to the money, little nigga, you get it backwards. She trying to find her someone better, they not in my bracket. I'm nothing on her face, and now little shawty need a napkin. I'm getting to these racks, little nigga. Blowing all this dope smoke, yo, bitch, she a help though. I met that bitch one time. Shotty, she the throat goat. What you know about a young nigga? Roll on Lorenzo. Shotty like to kick it with the gang and smoke that endo. If I'm bagging up that work again, then I just smirk. Little nigga, I'ma get it if I have to sell that smurf. Bitch, I came straight from the field. You could catch me on the turf. Chico Park, them niggas jump me and I have blood on my shirt. And it's back to back again. Back to back again. Would not recommend the Fuck with him on them platinum rims. Hit you effing in my man. Hit you from that long disc. He don't hit that wrong shit. Niggas trying to sneak this. That shit ain't they strongest. I'm just being honest. I can't make no promise. I could show your bitch off. Put diamonds on the atomics. My shit is so timeless. Took your bitch from eating ramen. Okay, you can't ride or die for me, low ho. You just not wrong, bitch. Uh, Oh, ho, I get it cracking. I pull up in this bitch, don't know nobody. Ho, what's happening? My niggas selling work, you out of town, you know they taxing. I like my bitches, bad as fucking, you know that they ratchet. I'm getting to the money, little nigga, you get it backwards. She trying to find her someone better, they not in my bracket. I'm nothing on her face, and now little shawty need a napkin. I'm getting to these racks, little nigga, I'm ecstatic, whoa.
Hey, you good? <laughs> hey, well, the aisle was one of the hardest performances we probably had on this show, bro. So that role in that second song, that was dope. Anyways, no uh, Lady Gaga covers from Akeemaw North tonight, unfortunately. Not today. Maybe on the next one. Who knows? He may <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he knows what's up. <laughs> Anyways, awesome episode. Thanks for hanging around with us, guys. That's all we got tonight, though. So for myself, for Akeem or for Damien's and Alien, for Studio 519, this is Producers Pit signing off, and we'll see you on the next one. May I beg your pardon? Yeah, you remember we ain't had no for me and my family start. Mama had to get it. She ain't even had no option. I just took it to the streets and tried to get it poppin'. We be at the mall. I be still in college shopping. Pull up in that throwback. All these bitches, they be cockin'. Little nigga, you ain't got no money. Why you talkin'? I just work my whole life just to see myself blossom.